For powering up your recorder, please ensure the LAN cable, network cable, is plugged in and also at least one camera. Uh, once you're powered up, you'll be prompted to enter a new password. There's no existing password on the latest firmware. The password needs to be eight digits long, containing at least a number, at least a character, and a character which is in uppercase. You'll be prompted to enter it twice. It's a good idea to write down the password before you key it in, as there's a high volume of customers that are forgetting their password, even at this early stage. Okay, that's the password accepted. Uh, language by default is English. This is the startup wizard. It guides you through the basic settings. You'll need to disable it in the top right hand corner so that it doesn't start up again. Otherwise when there's a power cut or you switch it off it'll keep coming out with this screen and customers like to think there's a fault. So please ensure you disable it. This is the time and date format. Again change it to your region. This is the IP address that is chosen as uh, enable DHCP, which is pick up IP address automatically, has already been ticked. This is the easy wizard, it's already enabled. Uh, you need to make a note of the verification code. You might have noticed the status is online already. Uh, this is the hard disk, it's already formatted, but you can format it again by clicking on the hard disk and then pressing initialize. That's the hard disk format complete. Let's click next. Next again for the IP cameras and I'm going to put it on continuous record. That's the basic initialization complete. Using Mozilla Firefox I'm going to key in the IP address of the DVR which is 192.168.1.71 it's more than likely that it's going to be a different address for yours. Uh, just refer to the setup wizard to find out what yours was. Key in the password that I set up earlier. You'll notice there'll be a number of pop-ups. Just allow and remember. Uh, your setup might be slightly different. So just action them accordingly. This is now telling me there's a new software. So I'm going to download and install that, it's being downloaded at the top. Click on the arrow, double click the software that's downloaded, allow it to run. Uh, it's now warning me that the Explorer is open and it needs to close it automatically. So it's closed it and installed and it will open up Mozilla Firefox again. software installed and now going to allow all channel to be shown and as you can see it's now on your local area network and working for internet viewing you'll need to register for easy with addresses shown in the top Click on register. I've already filled in most of the details, which is a username, just create any one for yourself. A password. Uh, this is not the password that you entered into the DVR already. Confirm the password. 
Where it says verification code, that's a code that's written on the right to make sure you're not a robot. Once you've entered all the details, just click next. Now this is a bit where most people go wrong. It's sent you an email to the email address you just registered with and it sent you a code. You need to look at that and key in here. It needs to be entered within 30 minutes, otherwise it expires, then click on OK. That's saying it's been successful. Again, we've got another pop-up, so I'm going to allow that. Uh, you may need to click on the download plugin, but in this case, on my system, I didn't need to. So now you're presented with the add screen. So click on that. It will look for any suitable devices connected on your network. This is on your local area network, so if you're not on site, this won't work this way. So it's found one. I'm going to add it. Now it's asking for a verification code. This is the code that's in uh, the network settings that we saw earlier in the initial setup. But you can get it from the matron screens as well. Okay, click OK. It's found it. You can change the name here or you can leave it as is. And then click OK. Now on this system this box doesn't close automatically so I've had to close it manually. If for some reason it won't add automatically and you know it's already on the network, you can key in the nine digit serial number in by hand. So that's the recorder added. You can add more recorders if you have more than one, uh, such as at your home, your office, or sub offices. This is the site management. You can view more than one site at the same time. I'm just going to go to a single screen. That's now showing you the only camera that I've got connected. That's the timeline at the bottom showing you where the recording is. You can choose to display all the cameras in one screen by clicking on multi-screen mode. I'm just going to show you the PTZ function here because we get asked this a lot and the question normally is can you control your cameras via your mobile phone or internet and the answer is yes. Although on the this example I can't zoom in or out. Please refer to the EasyWiz user guide for more detailed information.